Eastern European immigration. Views 1 million four Eastern European immigration. I end just two decades between 1891 and 1910, about 12.5 million people immigrated to the United States. The majority of these immigrants came from the countries and states that composed Eastern Europe, among them Austria-Hungary, Poland, and Russia. But the people leaving these countries did not necessarily claim ancestry in them. The borders of nations during the 19th century in Eastern Europe changed so frequently that immigration from Eastern and Central Europe cannot be accurately divided up into nationality counts. As Russia and Austria-Hungary expanded their empires, taking over many smaller countries, countries like Poland that had existed for centuries disappeared as sovereign, self-ruling, nations. Many ethnic groups besides the Poles found themselves without a state, the Lithuanians, the Czechs and Slovaks, the Croatians, and the Slovenians were all displaced, involuntarily removed from their home, at one time or another. In the 20th century, the Russian Revolution. 1917-21 World War I, 1914-18, and World War II, 1939-45, changed the national borders drastically again, displacing millions of Eastern Europeans. Like other immigrants, the Eastern European immigrants arrived in the United States to escape oppression, violence, or political upheaval, but also to try to improve their economic circumstances or to earn some money for their family in the old country. Because of the turmoil, some came to the United States with a plan of action to restore or rebuild their homelands. According to Roger Daniels, in Coming to America, a history of immigration and ethnicity in American life, among the peoples who immigrated to the United States from Eastern Europe in the late 19th and 20th century were, Albanians, Belarusians, Bosnian Muslims, Bulgarians, Carpatorusians, Cossacks, Croats, Czechs, Estonians, Finns, Georgians, Gypsies, Hungarians, Jews, Latvians, Lithuanians, Macedonians, North Caucasians, Poles, Romanians, Russians, Serbs, Slovaks, Slovenes, Wends, and Ukrainians. Austria-Hungary Historical background The Austro-Hungarian Empire originated with the unusually long-lasting rule of a royal Austrian family, the Habsburgs, whose dynasty, a series of leaders from the same family line that rule over many generations, originated in 1282. From their Austrian kingdom, the line of Habsburg rulers expanded their holdings throughout Europe. By 1526 the central components of the kingdom were Austria, Hungary, and Bohemia, present-day Czech Republic, but at various times the empire included Spain, Italy, Belgium, the Balkans, and more. From 1815 to 1848, Austria dominated European politics as the leading power of both the German Confederation and the Holy Alliance, Austria, Russia, and Prussia. In 1867 the Austrian Empire became the dual monarchy of Austria-Hungary. The two states had long been joined under Habsburg rule, but the Magyar people of Hungary insisted on this arrangement in order to obtain equal rights with Austria. At this time Austria-Hungary included the present-day countries of Austria, Hungary, Slovakia, and the Czech Republic, as well as parts of present-day Poland, Romania, Italy, Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Serbia and Montenegro. It comprised an area about the size of Texas and was inhabited by approximately 52 million people. The population was remarkably diverse. The two largest ethnic groups were the Germans, at about 10 million, and the Hungarians, at about 9 million. There were also Poles, Croats, Bosnians, Serbians, Italians, Czechs, Ruthenes, Ukrainians, Slovenes, Slovaks, and Romanians. At least 15 languages were regularly spoken, and there was a wide range of social, economic, and cultural systems. Eastern European Immigration, Fact Focus Between 1820 and 1920, Somewhere between 3.7 and 5 million people emigrated from the Austro-Hungarian Empire to the United States. 
The emigrants were Czechs, Slavs, Slovaks, Ukrainians, Poles, Magyars, Austrians, and others. Between 1867 and 1914 some 1,815,117 Hungarians immigrated to the United States, making up nearly half of all the emigrants from Austria-Hungary. About 400,000 Czechs arrived during that time, making up about 10% of the Austria-Hungary immigrants. After Poland was divided between Russia, Austria-Hungary, and Prussia, so many Poles came to the United States that Polish America became known as the fourth province of Poland, the other three being those areas controlled by Russia, Austria, and Prussia. In the 19th century, Russia had expanded its empire to the point that it held about one-sixth of Earth's land surface at that time. In the 1930s many Russians who had gone into exile in other European cities after the Russian Revolution felt the need to leave Europe altogether in the wake of the rising Nazi movement. More than one million people born in Russia but living elsewhere in Europe immigrated to the United States at that time. The second wave of Russian immigrants who arrived in the United States in the years after World War II, 1939-45, were confronted by the Red Scare. This wave of anti-communism became a witch hunt in which many innocent people were harassed and lost their jobs. Russian Americans felt driven to hide their ethnicity and tried to appear as much like other Americans as possible to avoid trouble, even though many of them had left their home to escape from the communist regime. The German Austrians and the Hungarian Magyars maintained most of the power within Austria-Hungary although. Eastern European Immigration, Words to Know Alien A person who is not a citizen of the United States Aristocracy The ruling class, or a government by a small privileged class Assimilation The way that someone who comes from a foreign land or culture becomes absorbed into a culture and learns to blend into the ways of its predominant, or main, society Citizen Someone who lives in and participates in a political community or country, who has fulfilled the requirements for citizenship as set out by the government. Citizens can expect certain rights and privileges from their government, such as voting or military defense, and at the same time the government has a right to expect its citizens to obey its laws. Communism An economic theory that does not include the concept of private property. Instead, the public, usually represented by the government, owns the goods and the means to produce them in common. Cha Also spelled Tsar, the emperor or ruler of Russia. Defect To illegally renounce one's citizenship and request residency in another country. Discrimination Unfair treatment based on racism or other prejudices. Displacement Involuntarily removal from one's home or nation. Dynasty A series of leaders who are from the same family line and rule over a long period of time. Emigration Leaving one's country to go to another country with the intention of living there. Emigrant is used to describe departing from one's country, for example, she emigrated from Ireland. Ethnic relating to a group of people who are not from the majority culture in the country in which they live, and who keep their own culture, language, and institutions. Exile Being sent away from one's homeland. Immigration To travel to a country of which one is not a native with the intention of settling there as a permanent resident. Immigrant is used to describe coming to a new country, for example, she immigrated to the United States. Industrialization The historic change from a farm-based economy to an economic system based on the manufacturing of goods and distribution of services on an organized and mass-produced basis. Labor unions Organizations that bring workers together to advance their interests in terms of getting better wages and working conditions. Migration 
to move from one place to another, not necessarily across national borders. Persecution Abusive and oppressive treatment Proletariat The laboring class Refugee the Refugee Act of 1980 defines a refugee as a person who has left the country in which he or she last lived and is unable to return to that country because of persecution or a well-founded fear of persecution on account of race, religion, nationality, membership in a particular social group, or political opinion. Once a person is determined to be a refugee in the United States, he or she is entitled to federal assistance in settling into a home and finding a job and in getting English language training temporary cash loans, and necessary medical services. Republic A country ruled by the people, rather than a king. Serfdom A system of servitude in which a peasant is bound to the soil he tills and is subject to the authority of his lord. They were not a majority of the population. From 1870 to 1914, Austria-Hungary experienced increasing domestic difficulties. Having many nationalities under one central rule was a serious problem. The Czechs and South Slavs demanded to govern themselves, and the Magyars severely restricted the rights of the Slavs, Slovaks, and Croats. Besides, new political movements had grown with the rise of industrialism, the change from a farm-based economy to an economic system based on the manufacturing of goods and distribution of services on an organized and mass-produced basis. By the end of the 19th century the new middle class and the working class were finding voice, many were advocating some form of socialism, a political and economic system that does away with private property, placing the nation's manufacture and distribution of goods into the hands of all the people, or the state as their representative. The Habsburgs responded by granting universal suffrage, right to vote, in 1907, but then took to ruling by decree, thereby choking off further reforms. Immigration from the Empire begins After the dual monarchy was established, Austria-Hungary permitted anyone in its realm who wished to leave to do so, setting off a mass migration to the United States. The Czechs in Bohemia and the Slovaks from Hungary began to migrate in large numbers to the United States. The Poles who were living under Austria-Hungary in 1870 also began to emigrate by the thousands. See section on Poland later in this chapter. By the early 20th century, Austria-Hungary was losing its struggle to remain a world power. In 1908 Austria annexed the heavily Serbian area of Bosnia-Herzegovina infuriating the new kingdom of Serbia. On June 18, 1914, at Sarajevo in Bosnia-Herzegovina, Serbian patriots assassinated the Habsburg Archduke Francis Ferdinand, 1863-1914, nephew of the emperor and heir to the Austrian throne. Their act set off World War I. Austria-Hungary was joined by Germany, Italy, though Italy would soon defect to the other side, and Turkey to form the Central Powers which fought against the Allies, France, Russia, the United Kingdom, and, from 1917, the United States. After the defeat of the Central Powers and the collapse of their empires at the war's end in 1918, Austria was reduced to its German-speaking sections and proclaimed a republic. The Mass Migration In the turmoil of the last century of the Habsburg rule between 1820 and 1920, Somewhere between 3.7 and 5 million people emigrated from the Austro-Hungarian Empire to the United States. The emigrants were Czechs, Slavs, Slovaks, Ukrainians, Poles, Magyars, Austrians, and others, and they left for reasons ranging from persecution or bad crops at home to hopes of a better life in America. Since they were not one national group but many, they scattered, establishing communities within the United States by national groups. Czechs and Slovaks The Czechs, whose kingdom of Bohemia had been taken over by the Austrian Empire hundreds of years before, had long been dissatisfied with the Habsburg rule. The Czechs were a Slavic people from Bohemia, Moravia, and parts of Silesia, and the majority were Catholics, though there were Protestants and Jews among them. When World War I began, 
thousands of Czech soldiers immediately surrendered to the Russians rather than fight for Austria-Hungary. They were reorganized as the Czech Legion, which fought on the Russian side. During the war, the Czechs joined with the Slovaks and other suppressed nationalities of the Austro-Hungarian Empire in pushing for their own state. The Czechoslovak Republic was established in 1918. Within the new nation were at least five nationalities, Czechs, Germans, Slovaks, Moravians, and Ruthenians, Ukrainians. An estimated 400,000 Czechs arrived in the United States between 1848 and 1914. The Czechs set up urban communities in New York, Chicago, Cleveland, and St. Louis. Many Czechs headed west to establish farming communities in Iowa, Nebraska, Wisconsin, and Texas. In 1847 Czech immigrants established their first settlement in Texas at Cat Spring in Austin County. The next year, major Czech settlements were established in Wisconsin, especially in and around the city of Racine. By 1855 Czech communities had been established in Chicago, St. Louis, and New York. In 1856 New York became the home of the first U.S. school teaching the Czech language and history. Czech newspapers were established in several of the new communities. The Czechs generally strove to preserve their culture and language. In many of the towns where they settled, little English was spoken. The Slovaks in Hungary immigrated to the United States in large numbers. They had been oppressed by the Magyars in Hungary and most wished to escape from the tyranny. They also migrated to improve their circumstances. Most Slovaks who immigrated did not have professional skills appropriate to the US economy and took work in the coal mines and in the steel mills. After World War II, Czechoslovakia became a Soviet-ruled nation. After the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1989, the Slovaks and the Czechs decided to separate. In 1993, they became the Czech Republic and the Slovak Republic. Slovakia has had economic difficulties in connection with modernizing and industrializing since the end of the Soviet rule. The United States has the largest community of Czechs, outside of their homeland, in the world. In 2000, the U.S. Census reported 1,262,527 persons of Czech ethnicity and 441,403 persons listed as Czechoslovakian living in the United States. Hungarian Americans The first small wave of Hungarians arrived in the United States from 1849 to 1851. The incoming immigrants consisted of about 4,000 of the rebels who had led a successful revolution in Austria-Hungary in 1848 but were then defeated by Austria in 1849. Although the total Hungarian-American population was still only about 4,000 by the time of the American Civil War, 1861-65, some 800 Hungarian-Americans served in the Union Army, fighting for the North, and a much smaller number in the Confederate Army, fighting for the South. Of the 800 Union soldiers, almost 100 became high-ranking officers. A few of the Confederate soldiers also became officers. Hungarian Americans thereby had the highest percentage of their total population serving as soldiers and officers in the Civil War services of any ethnic group in America at that time. The largest wave of Hungarian immigration to America began in 1880 and lasted until 1914. Between 1880 and 1899, about 430,000 Hungarians entered the United States. The number jumped to 1,260,000 for the years of 1899 to 1914, with the peak year in 1907 when 185,000 Hungarians immigrated. Hungarians made up nearly half of all the emigrants from Austria-Hungary, at a total of about 1,815,117 emigrants from 1867 to 1914. Most of the immigrants in this wave were young peasant men who hoped to earn enough money in the United States to return to Hungary and set themselves up in better circumstances there. An estimated 20% of the immigrants actually did return to Hungary, but the rest settled permanently in the United States. Although the majority of Hungarian immigrants had been farmers in Hungary, few took up farming in America. 
Their goal was to earn money quickly, and the best place to do that was in the industrial centers of the Northeast and Midwest. They took low-paying, menial jobs that no one else wanted. Many of the jobs were dangerous, such as mining or working in iron and steel mills. Serious injuries and deaths were common. Because most of the immigrants were hoping to return to Hungary in the near future, they saved as much of their earnings as possible. They took lodgings in inexpensive, slum boarding houses that were overcrowded, filthy, and often crawling with rats and other vermin. Despite their concentration in selected U.S. cities, Hungarian Americans did not create little Hungaries during this first major wave of immigration. The young men were not interested in settling down, so they did not buy houses or establish neighborhoods. Instead, they moved from job to job, boarding house to boarding house, waiting for the day when they could return to Hungary. They did organize a number of insurance, or sick benefit, societies to help care for each other. Other cultural, social, religious, and political Hungarian-American societies sprang up in the late 1800s, but they remained fragmented local efforts until 1906 when the American-Hungarian Federation, AHF, was founded. A national organization, the AHF still exists today. With the beginning of World War I in Europe in 1914, Hungarian immigration to the United States halted. As Hungary and the United States were on opposing sides of the war, Hungarian Americans found themselves in a difficult position, caught between their ties to Hungary and loyalty to their new home. At first, they continued to show allegiance to Hungary, but once the United States officially entered the war in 1917, Hungarian Americans felt it necessary to make a show of allegiance to America. Though most Hungarian Americans still sympathized with Hungary, they began to celebrate American holidays and hold loyalty parades in order to escape harassment in the United States. At the end of World War I, Hungary was divided into a number of smaller states, ruled by foreign powers. Hungarian Americans who had intended to return to Hungary suddenly found themselves without a homeland. Many had not yet become American citizens because of their intention to return to Hungary, but the Hungary they had known no longer existed. Many Hungarian Americans shifted from temporary U.S. residency to permanent residency. They moved out of the miserable boarding houses and bought homes. Little Hungaries developed on the outskirts of cities. Immigrants who had clung to their Hungarian ways now began to be assimilated, to become similar enough to be absorbed as one of the predominant society, into mainstream American culture in language, dress, and other customs. The move away from the temporary Hungarian enclaves and, at the same time from homeland ties and loyalties, hastened the assimilation process. New Brunswick, New Jersey, a Hungarian-American town. New Brunswick, New Jersey, is a small college town, home of Rutgers University, of about 50,000 people. The town served as a center for people who were emigrating from Eastern Europe at the turn of the century. In 1930 more than one-fifth of New Brunswick's population was Hungarian-American. In the 1980s and 1990s, about 40% of all the nation's Hungarian-Americans lived in or within 100 miles of the town, making New Brunswick according to Fred LeBlanc in The American Hungarians, the most Hungarian city in the United States. New Brunswick had been the seat of a great deal of Hungarian-American culture. In 1909 the largest Hungarian-language weekly newspaper in the United States, the Magyar Hernok, Magyar Herald, was established in the city. New Brunswick is home to the Hungarian Heritage Center and to the Serdongolo Folk Dance Ensemble of New Brunswick the leading Hungarian folk dance group on the east coast of the United States. New Brunswick is also the host of an annual Hungarian festival, with traditional foods, music, and folk dancing. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, the Hungarian population of New Brunswick had become secondary to new waves of immigration. New Brunswick now has large Asian and Hispanic populations. The Hungarian Americans in and around the town continue to proudly celebrate their heritage, but, like most American immigrant populations, 
their numbers are dropping as generations become further removed from the immigrant generation. After the war, new immigrants from Hungary began to arrive. They were quite different from those who came before. Instead of peasant farmers, most were well-educated professionals who had been displaced by the post-war economic upheaval or who disagreed with the increasing German Nazi influence in Hungary. There were a number of leftists, people believing in reform, as well as Jews. These new immigrants were not interested in joining the peasant-based Hungarian-American community. Hungarian-Americans became split between the old immigrants and the new. At the same time, second-generation Hungarian-Americans began to break out of the tightly-knit Hungarian-American community. By the start of World War II, the Hungarian-American community had become quite divided within itself. World War II, like World War I, was difficult for many Hungarian-Americans, since Hungary again came into the war on the German side, opposing the Americans. Most believed that the Axis powers, Germany, Italy, and Japan, should be defeated, but they also felt attached to Hungary and could not bring themselves to stand fully against their former homeland. They tried to excuse Hungary's role in the Axis forces by describing Hungary as an unwilling satellite of Germany. Despite old loyalties, most Hungarian Americans freely contributed to the Allied war effort. The Allied forces consisted of the United States, the Soviet Union, Great Britain, and other countries and fought against the Axis powers. When the war was over Hungary adopted a republican constitution, but in 1948 the Hungarian Workers' Communist Party seized power. Communism is a system of government in which the state plans and controls the economy and a single party holds power. Hungarian foreign trade was oriented toward the Soviet Union, and industry and land were taken over by the government. A popular uprising against the Soviets in October 1956 was put down by Soviet military forces after a few days' success. Many people then fled the country, while others were executed. From 1956, Hungary was a firm ally of the Soviet Union. The US Congress passed the Displaced Persons Acts of 1948 and 1950 at the end of World War II to assist refugees, people who have left their country and cannot return without fear of persecution. These acts allowed a new wave of Hungarians to immigrate to the United States. Three distinct groups of Hungarians have immigrated to America since World War II. The first, referred to as the 45 ers and 47 ers or DPS, displaced persons, consisted of right-wing intellectuals, high-ranking Hungarian military officers, and members of the Hungarian elite escaping the new communist regime. Then, from 1947 to the mid-1950s, middle-class Hungarians began to flee Soviet oppression. Lastly, between 1956 and 1960, a wave of young people came to America seeking better educational and economic opportunities. The Hungarian American Population Hungarian immigration to America continues today, though in relatively small numbers. Illegal immigration to the United States from Hungary has been a reality since the 19th century, increasing each time either country has placed restrictions on immigration and emigration. Hungarian immigrants are sometimes classified as other nationalities, owing to the multi-ethnic nature of the Hungarian population and the political division of Hungary into smaller states. Therefore, it is impossible to know the exact number of Hungarian immigrants to the United States. The 2000 census reports 1,398,724 persons of Hungarian, or Magyar, ancestry. Although Hungarian Americans live throughout the United States, their population is concentrated in the Northeast and the Midwest. The states with the largest Hungarian American populations include Ohio, New York, California, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. Hungarian American Culture The majority of Hungarian Americans are Catholic, but there are also significant numbers of Protestants, particularly Calvinists and Lutherans. Greek Orthodox, and Jews. The first Hungarian worship service in the United States was held in 1852 in New York City. 
It was an ecumenical service for any and all Hungarian Americans, including Catholics, Protestants, Orthodox, and Jews. This ecumenical spirit is still evident in certain Hungarian American churches, while others, such as the Calvinists, have become fractured even among themselves. Hungarian Americans today remain divided according to generation and time of immigration. Older Hungarian Americans from the first major wave, and some of their children, continue to hold fast to an idealized image of Hungary. The Hungarian Scouts in Exile organization promotes an idealized Hungarian nationalism among younger generations. Founded in 1945 in Germany, the Hungarian Scouts in Exile first functioned in refugee camps in Central Europe to maintain a sense of Hungarian identity and pride after World War II. Around 1950, as Hungarian refugees immigrated to the United States, the organization's center moved along with them to Garfield, New Jersey. In 1980, there were some 6,000 Hungarian scouts in 79 troops located in about a dozen countries on five continents. Around one-third of those scouts and troops were in the United States. Hungarian Americans who immigrated between World Wars I and II, and those who immigrated immediately following World War II were radicals and professionals who were forced to flee Hungary because of political and economic upheavals, the increasing influence of Nazi Germany, and the eventual communist takeover. They therefore have quite a different picture of Hungary than do the older, first-wave immigrants. More recent immigrants have lived in communist-dominated Hungary and so have a much less idealized vision of their former homeland that differs from both first- and second-wave Hungarian Americans. Hungarian Americans remain quite divided in their views of Hungary. Polish Americans Historical background The modern Republic of Poland lies in Central Europe. To the north of it is Russia, Lithuania, Belarus, and Ukraine are at its eastern border, Hungary, Slovakia, and the Czech Republic lie to its south, Germany lies to the west. These boundaries have not always been the country's borders. In fact, Poland did not exist as a nation on the map of Europe from 1795 to 1918. In the 16th century, the Polish kingdom was large and powerful and experiencing what is often called its golden age. Polish artists and scientists were producing great works and the country was enjoying peace and religious toleration while other parts of Europe were experiencing bloody conflicts between the Catholics and the Protestants. Poland and Lithuania had united through a royal marriage in 1386. During the 16th century the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth spread out to include Ukraine and parts of Russia. At that time, Poland's nobles made up about 10% of its population. Although Poland was a monarchy, the nobles obtained great powers, severely limiting the king's powers and calling themselves a noble democracy. They tried to govern by consensus, if everyone in the parliament could not agree on something, it would not be done. Because of this, almost no legislation passed in Poland for quite a few years. In the meantime, the democratic aspects of the government were reserved only for the gentry. About 90% of Poland's people were poor peasants, they had been forced into serfdom, system of servitude in which a peasant is bound to the soil he tills and is subject to the authority of his lord as the nobility grew stronger. They were compelled to work for a lord, a landowner who could control almost every aspect of their lives, including where they lived, what work they did, and who they married. As the nobles undercut the power of the king and reduced the peasants to a form of slavery, Poland was severely weakened. Poland's neighbors Russia, Prussia, and Austria took advantage of the internal problems and invaded the region. They began dividing Poland among themselves beginning in 1772 by taking about one-third of its territory. They partitioned it, divided it into parts, a second time in 1793. Upon the third and final partitioning of 1795, the nation of Poland ceased to exist. Austria-Hungary took over Galicia, Prussia got northwestern Poland, and Russia took Ukraine and eastern and central Poland. Polish immigration to America begins. The Polish nobility were not happy with the partitioning of Poland. Under the new governments, 
they lost the extensive powers they had enjoyed. Starting in the 1760s, many began to emigrate. They often set up exile communities, groups of people who had fled or been sent away from their home, in European cities, trying to stir up interest in the restoration of their former country. Some of these exiles became ardent proponents of democracy, and when they heard about the American Revolution, 1775-83, quite a few of them travelled across the Atlantic to help the American colonists fight the British. Among these adventurous Poles was Polish statesman and military hero Tadeusz Kosciuszko, 1746-1817, who later returned to the United States to serve as a link between President Thomas Jefferson, 1743-1826, and leaders of the French Revolution. 1789-99. Count Kazimierz Pulaski, 1747-1779, who had distinguished himself defending Poland against the Russians before the partitioning, also came to fight with the rebels in the revolution. Pulaski formed his own cavalry and earned the title the father of the American cavalry before being killed in the Battle of Savannah, Georgia. Kosciuszko and Pulaski were just the beginning of a long period of Polish migration to the United States. The Poles tried repeatedly to rebel against their foreign rulers and restore Poland as a nation but the Russians and Austrians were too strong for them. After several major uprisings in the 19th century, many members of the Polish upper class chose to escape the new oppressive governments. So many came to the United States that Polish America became known as the fourth province of Poland, the other three being those areas controlled by Russia, Austria, and Prussia, respectively. Another term for the Polish community outside of Poland is Polonia. A few groups of peasant farmers also came to America, looking for better economic opportunities. They set up Polish farming communities in places like Panna Maria, Texas, the first permanent Polish community in America, founded in 1854. Polish immigration from the 1770s to about 1870 is sometimes referred to as the first wave but more often the first wave is considered to have begun in 1870 when Polish serfs were given their freedom and began to emigrate. Just as the serfs were freed, the United States began encouraging immigration to help rebuild the country after the devastation of the American Civil War. Up to two million Poles immigrated to the United States between 1870 and 1914. Most Polish immigrants in this first large wave of immigration, also called the old emigration, were single young men looking for the chance to work at wage-earning jobs, save up their money, and return to Poland. Some 30% actually did return to Poland, but the rest stayed in the United States. As uneducated, though generally literate, peasant farmers, they were unskilled and unprepared for the industrialized world of America. They took whatever jobs they could find, working in mines, mills, factories, 